All right, so La Roach is here. Um, you know, the last time you were on the show, it was me, you, Ty Hunter, and I don't even know if I had a co-host at the time, but it was halfway through the interview that I was realizing that this probably should have been two solo interviews. Yeah. Because you're sort of like, you're like your own Beyonce. Oh, thank you. <laughs> not not any connection to him, yeah, yeah, Beyonce, no, but I meaning you built your own name, your own career. I just, at the time when I was doing the show, was thinking like, how can I get two people I am really close to in fashion mm -hmm. together to have a conversation? But clearly I wasn't a producer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, it was great. I love Ty. I think um, Ty had definitely had an era and I think he's creating a new era with Billy Porter right now, which I, I enjoy. Um, and he's someone that I looked at coming into the industry that, you know, that was working. Um, but yeah, it was, it was interesting. But I do think that um, our careers are different in a way. Um, but I have so much respect for him, and I think he's a beautiful person. Like, the spirit, he's, he's a beautiful person, which you know. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. No, but you, we're all very different people. You know, like, we're all successful in our own way. Mm -hmm. We all got our own little caddy traits. I haven't really seen yours yet, unless you're on Ciroc, you know? Like, we haven't been out and partied in a while, so I don't yeah. really... Do you go out anymore? Where you be at the house? I don't really go out anymore. I um, you know, I got goals, you know, and I I got, and me reaching my goals doesn't um, rely on me being social, so I just choose not to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll go out every now and again. I'll, you are one of the only people that can call me and be like come out, and I'll do it. It's like you, Colin, and that's about it. But you know, I just I rather. I think that I've been put in such a, a great opportunity and a place where I have gotten to a really high place in my career and now I'm trying to transition. And so like just being out and being social isn't part of that. And so I don't, you know, I come out for work, you know, if it's not work, it's like, it's fine. I'd rather, I'd rather stay at home, especially with the pandemic and COVID and me working throughout the whole thing and trying to stay as safe as possible. Like I just got turned off in a way uh, when it comes to like being out with people. And I feel like when you, like you, you mentioned your house, you have a home. When mm -hmm. you have a home, you really just want to be home. Mm -hmm. Especially out here because a lot of the people that we be politicking with, they ain't got no home. No. And there's no shade towards at them all. because they love being at the club and sucking on bottles yeah. more than they do getting yeah. money and deposits. No, I have a home that I actually own. <laughs> That was See, actually, that's the shade I, was I mean, and a beautiful, you catch it. that's what you wanted, <laughs> a beautiful home that was actually featured in Architectural Digest, like, so I have some, an oasis to, to wake up in and be proud I'm not, of. I'm not morning. doing this with you. Let me tell you, okay, so I get a house, right? My house is beautiful. It's, it is. it's, it's, it's a big house. And I was like, yo, I want to design my house. And I called you and I was like, you know, he was like, yeah, go on and come by the compound and take a look at mine. But I saw it online. I was like, I, my I got money, but mm -hmm. I'm not there the, there yet. Mm -hmm. One thing I will say that I love about your house, though, it, it has, like, your personality. I don't feel like my house, it has its own personality, but it, it's not my personality. Yeah. So did you, were you, like, hands-on? No, I did everything. Okay. I did everything. I worked with a contractor during, um, during the pandemic who had time and, and really knocked it out. And we did some things together, but as far as all, this, all the interiors, um, I did it. I did it all myself, which I was really proud of myself. Um, and hopefully one day that'll lead me to doing interiors and stuff with like Target or something, you know, because I, I fell in love with. It. I had never ventured into that. Um, but yeah, I did it in, in a couple months. I made a lot of mistakes. I fixed them, and you know, got to a place where I love it. Have you? I mean, I had talked to Kathy Ireland years ago. Mm -hmm. She was a model in fashion, but then she got into home decor, mm -hmm. actually like furniture and all that type of stuff. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm manifesting that now because mm -hmm. I, I really fell in love with interiors when I was doing my house. And, um, and it, you know, being shot for Architectural Digest kind of like put the seal on it, like, oh, you can do this, shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, hopefully I'll do something, but I want to do something that, um, that can reach the masses. So Target would be, or something like that would be interesting to come in and do like, you know, home goods and blankets and sheets and plates and dishes and all that type of stuff. Cause I really fell in love with it during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When your house looks that expensive, do you go through your phone and say, okay, this can't come over because their shoes are always dirty or, you know, like how do you decide who can come to us? Cause I recently had somebody come and steal some from my house. Nobody comes to my house. At all? No, I don't have company. I don't have company. Like if so I have company, 
Because you're single too. So you have, I mean, what happens when you meet somebody that you want to, you don't bring them to the house? I don't bring them to my house. Okay. Because I feel like if you invite them in, they'll come back when you ain't there. <laughs> Especially the type of boys I like. <laughs> <laughs> Hop over the gate. I, I ain't doing that. Okay, so how do you navigate in being so successful now and being single? Because I, I really feel like the more successful you become, the more of a target you get. You know, mm -hmm. we know there's a lot of, I said this on Wild and Out, I call them homeless sexuals. Yeah. You know, who they need a place to live, so they're willing to have sex for that. But when you when you look at how successful you are now and how visible you are, mm -hmm. do you think about that? Like, like no, the impact that you have? No, two things, right? I would never be victim of the tender swindler because... Um, I'm not looking for love like that. You know, I, I don't desire that type of love. And this is something I really just realized again in the pandemic. It's like, I don't, I'm not looking for that head over heels. I need you every day to be with, I'm just not looking for that love. It doesn't, that. <laughs> but why though? I mean, that, you it, have it, the house, I, you have the career. Yeah, I just, I'm not, it's just, it doesn't thrill me to, to think of it. If it happens, it happens, but I'm not searching for that. I'm not searching for love like that. So I'm not opening myself up to the possibility of that trying kind of happening to me. And so, I also so don't- what marriage? You're not even thinking about it? No, I'm, I'm not. And then I'm also not, like my social media and my persona doesn't give you that. My persona is very much, don't say anything to me. Don't speak in me. Don't speak to me. Like walk away when you see me walking in. Like that's my persona. That's not really who I am as a person, but that's the persona that people, that I've kind of built and people, um, kind of gravitate towards like, oh, he a bitch, don't, you know. But why, why, why you build that though? I don't see, because I know you, so I don't get yeah, that. Like, I, yeah, yeah. I don't get that. But why did, did you build it intentionally that way? Kind of. Why? Because I, I just, when I came to, so I had a different life in Chicago. When I came to LA, I didn't want to get caught up in the LA scene. I didn't want to be partying and, and doing all that. And like, I just want to come and build my career. And so it's what I focus on. And so I didn't really come in wanting people to like me because if, if you like me, then you want to be around me, you want to be my friend. And I'm just like, I, I just, so I, I built this thing where it's like, mm, you know, hi. And you know what I mean? Like, I mean, you're, you're not, you're not mixy at all. At all. Yeah. No. But is that a Chicago thing? Yeah, I think so too. So what do you think of the LA scene? Cause you out here, you navigate through right. it well. I mean, we have a lot of the same. I don't even want to say friends. I think we have a lot of the same associates. Yeah. Because I used to be the, I want to know everybody and be cool with everybody person. And now I'm like, don't, just leave me alone. But that also benefit your business and who you are and what you've built. Like, yeah. you kind of needed that. Uh, like I said earlier, I didn't, I didn't, my career doesn't call me to be social because I've already made it to a place where I don't have to socialize people, to be around people, to get clients and all that. But I do think LA is mixy. I think LA, um, it's a lot of things that I don't enjoy. Like I don't enjoy drugs. There's a lot of drugs. There's a lot of sex. There's a lot of these things. And I'm like, I really just don't enjoy any of that. So it's like, again, I don't like, I don't care to be around it. Mm -hmm. So my birthday this year, I, um, I, I decided I'm going to get styled for my birthday. I lost this weight. Let me go ahead and get me some clothes. So I call law. You know, funny, you're, you're never rude to me at all, but it was like, oh, that's cute that you want me. Um, and you put me with somebody else. Which I but think, I did because I had COVID. Okay. Right. Uh, I had COVID. I, which, just, I thought that was your nice way of saying, like, I'm going to look out for you. Mm -mm. No, I don't lie. I really I really had COVID. I would have came to your Wait, party. Wait, did you have COVID? I don't yeah. think you Oh, that's why, that's why you yeah, didn't come. That's why I said But I did look great, that. and he did a great job. Yeah. But I wanted to have, you know, because it's experience. all experience. You said that. And I thought that was beautiful. you like, I want the full experience. And I think that's why I'm so successful, because I do deliver a, a very high-end high quality experience for my clients. So mm -hmm. I wanted, I felt bad because I wanted you to experience it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had COVID. I still look great. So it was good. Yeah, you did. And I made sure he took care of you. Okay. So you don't go, what's your title? You're not styling. So I mean, you can Image architect. Image architect. Yeah, Is that a new thing that you created? I created and I own the trademark. I'm the only Do you really own the, the trademark? I really own the trademark. Image architect. Image architect. And I will send <laughs> A cease and desist letter <laughs> to anybody who uses it. Wait, so why did you coin that phrase? Um, you know, because the other girls, you just kind of look at them like. <laughs> I look at them like anything. Because <laughs> you're flying too high and can't see them. I mean, I mean, wait, so why image architect? Why why did you? Um, what? Is, so at first it was a way for me to differentiate myself from because it's a lot of stylists here. You know, it's a lot of multi hyphenate people here. You know. 
Um, and so then, but when I really started thinking about the work that I was doing, it was to me very similar to what an architect does. You know, um, I do a lot of research and and pull in different people that's similar to like contractors for them. It's like hair and makeup and the clothes and you know are like the windows and doors. And so when I just kind of like was saying that to myself, and I was very early in my career, and I'm like, okay. So I feel like an architect, but not for structures, for, for people's business, I mean, for a person. So I, so I did it and I, you know, I started calling myself that and then I trademarked it. Mm-hmm. So when you're, when you're involved with your clients, it's the full experience, what you talk about, it's mm-hmm. not just the clothes. No, I, w- I need to be in control of the whole look. If I, if I can be, I wanna be in control of the whole look because I think that the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, right? So when everything has to work together for it to be the best look and for it to you know do what i needed to do so now here's the deal what what is ever and this is gonna sound crazy Mm -hmm. because i don't know celine beyond Mm -hmm. like that unless Mm -hmm. your client whatever but what people are crazy about her she's an icon you know you know some of her songs everybody in the world knows some of her songs yeah you know what i mean like no matter how 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 old you are because your grandma your mother you know and culturally she means a lot to people. So it's like when you have someone that's some like mostly the entire world knows at least one of her songs, mm-hmm. that's iconic mm-hmm. in itself. Facebook, where she looks very youthful too. I mean, is it part mm-hmm. of her style or part of the work that you guys do together mm-hmm. to keep her looking? Well, um, cause I've seen some talentless looks too. I started working with Celine when her husband died. So I, I came in um, because, because she's been around for so long that people think she's so much older than what she is. Right. And she's actually 52, I think, now. She's younger than Jennifer Lopez, you know, and Holly Berry. Wow. But since she's been singing for the last 35 years, like, people always thought that she was, like, in her 70s almost. But she started really young. So I was hired to come in and change the perception of who people thought she was. And um, we you did that with fashion. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, changed the perception. And so she started to be known as, like, a fashion icon and, you know, all the designers wanted to dress her and take her to the Met. She had never been to the Met. She hadn't been to a fashion show in 20 years. And so I kind of opened that world back up for her. And then I left for a couple of years and I just came back to do the, the new the new Vegas show. Mm. So I would just be hard to come back and do that. But she's um, actually out. She's ill right now. Um, so we'll see when she's better Then I'll do the Vegas show and we'll do whatever it is that we do. So when you are with somebody and you build them up and then you leave, what happens? I mean, do you teach them how to shop so they can go do it for themselves? Or teach them how to put their looks together? Yeah. Or, cause some people like for me, I don't know how to style. I go if I can wear it and it fits, like mm-hmm. this right here don't really fit. I mean, it fits when I'm standing up, but yeah. whatever. And it looks bad on camera, but whatever. Um, I'm not a stylish person. Like I just, yeah. if it matches and it fits, I'll buy it. When you put somebody together, and then you leave. Don't they go through some level of a withdrawal or? Um, well, I, well, when I left, she start, She was working. She continued working on with somebody that was on my team okay. that had worked with me with her. Got it. So it was like it was already. So you're kinda, still involved. Yeah. No, I wasn't involved anymore. But it was it was kind of like a blueprint, and that's the architect speak, right? It was a blueprint that I always that we knew worked, and it was just like you plugging in things at that point. Mm-hmm. So how do you? How did you build? your relationship with her um to i mean she is an icon mm-hmm. how did you how did that relationship come about where you were able to build that level of trust to come in and just totally transform her brand? well she um she called me she called me i got a call it was a really interesting story i had a manager at the time and she called she called me and she said celine wants to talk to you i'm like celine who because i hadn't dreamt that dream yet a dream that big yet you, you know thought it was a person that owned the bags no, that would have been great too. But uh, <laughs> she called and she was like, Celine wants to meet you. I'm like, Celine who? She like Celine Dion. I'm like, oh, shit. you know what I mean? Like, really? So she had started to look at my work and follow my work with Zendaya. And she 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 said that Zendaya, Zendaya was like 17 at the time, was wearing clothes that at a woman of her age, she also felt like she can wear without trying to, you know, be something she wasn't. And so, yeah, we had a good conversation. She um, offered me to come to Paris for two months and to do her um, everyday clothes. And I ended up coming to Paris doing the everyday clothes and then also doing tour wardrobe. So Celine Dion was my first um, tour that I ever did. You talk about Zendaya, like I recently watched you guys. I don't know 
if it was a was it a press run for Spider Man or you guys were overseas? What was that? Um, yeah, it was overseas. It was Spider Man and shows. Were you at shows? The last too? one? No, no, no. No. Mm-mm. Okay, she every day was just a different look, like a yeah. crazy, uh, and you were posting like archive pieces, and then like from back whenever they yeah. had originally been worn, and then and then the pieces that she was wearing. Yeah. How did? What's your vision for that? Like, how how did that come about? Is that a collaborative process, or did you decide that's what I'm gonna do? Right. Um. Well. I've been working with Zendaya since she was 13, turning 14. So um, we grow in this industry together. And when I came on to work with her, it, I took on the responsibility of teaching her fashion um, and teaching her um, about vintage and archival things and things that came before and just sparking her interest um, in it. And so it's always just been a part of what we did, you know, and now it's, it's a trend. You see it a lot. But we've been doing it since she was 14 years old, you know, and um, yeah, and it just feels good, especially when we wear iconic pieces that have been on the runway or like an, uh, um, an amazing black woman made it or a black designer or something like that. So it's just been it's been things that we've been doing over the years to kind of um, just satisfy and entertain ourselves, mm-hmm. you know. Well, when she and I, we never do anything. We never think about have. Well, I say we should have. We've never thought about what people were gonna think about anything. It's always been us, let's tell this story, let's create this woman, let's create this narrative, and um, yeah, and just play, basically. I wanna circle back to some on the business part, because so, I never told you this, but one of our conversations made me really think about my agent, I ended up firing my agent. Mm-hmm. Um, but you were talking about the business, mm-hmm. and, and I think a lot of people will see what you do online as far as the work, but not understand like your business mentality mm-hmm. behind the scenes. Yeah. And you were talking about your value one day and you were telling me how you made it clear to your people what your value was. Yeah. And it takes a certain level of courage and confidence in your career where you can say like, this is what I want, this is what I deserve, this is what you will pay me, or you can go find somebody else. Where did yeah. that come from? Uh, I think that just came from me being from streets and from Chicago and um, knowing very early that you have to know your worth. Um, I'll tell a story. I, when I first started trying to be a stylist in, um, in Chicago, there was a girl and she was trying to be a makeup artist. And so we were like the two people that were like, oh, you know, call him, call her, call him, call her. And every time I got a call and booked a job, the next time I wanted more money. You know what I mean? I would, the rate would go up. You know, was, I felt like I had, was more experienced every single time. And for her, her rate stayed the same. And um, she started out real low and then I stopped seeing her. And so I called him like, hey, I haven't saw you on any shoots, you know, the test shoots or the shoots or whatever. You know, we were doing like Chicago rappers and all type of together. And she was like, I moved back home. And I'm like, wow, she was like, I became the $75 girl. And what she was saying is that she had done so many things for so little money and for favors and all this, that when people call her and tried to book her, she would give them a rate. And they was like, but you did it for this person for $75. So she couldn't break it. So that shit never left my head. I'm like, <laughs> I'm never gonna be the $75 girl. I'm never gonna be, you know what I mean? So I came in to LA like, no, I'm gonna be the best. You know, I know I have the talent. I wanna be the highest paid. I wanna make more money. I wanna do this. I wanna live this certain type of lifestyle. And uh, my whole focus, and drive has been to get me there, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and if, if people don't understand that, then they can't work with me or for me, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause I, I, want, I want the best, I want the most, you know? And I think I deserve that. But what was your process to getting there though? Because I know, or was it, that was the mentality coming in the door? Absolutely. Okay, cause see mine, I think has been an evolving thing. I said this year, I'm adding a zero on it. So if it ain't this, I'm, I'm not interested. Yeah. And there was a thought where I was like, oh, well, what if they don't want to pay it? But when you know who you are, you know what impact and influence yeah. you have and what you can do, Yeah. yesterday's price is not today's price. Never. And if they don't want to pay you, then that's not for you. Right. If they really want you, you're going to get what you want. And if you don't, that wasn't for you. Mm-hmm. But at, for whatever the reason the universe sees fit, it wasn't for you. Mm-hmm. And I, and then when you live in that and, you know, you I, if, I, if I tell somebody and they be like, oh, that's too expensive, I'm like, okay, thank you. But what seems to happen is, They'll come back around, and then when they come back around, they gotta pay more. Right, exactly. All right, so let's go back to the client. So mm-hmm. um, I actually met my friend Tiffany Haddish through you at a party uh, during um, 
What was it, Fashion Week a few years ago? Maybe, yeah. So we were at the Jeremy Scott party. Jeremy Scott party. You yep. were there yeah, with, yeah, yeah, you were true. there with her. I was the after there. party. That's the after true. party. Yeah. You were there yeah. with her. I was there with Cardi, and we've hung out several times since then. Mm -hmm. And then now y'all are not working together mm -hmm. anymore. What happened? Um, <laughs> I I start off by saying this. I love Tiffany Haddish, right? You know that she's one of the most beautiful people. Yeah. Um, most beautiful pe souls. Ever. like there's an innocence about her that you just want to protect her right and when you saw us Tiffany was you know breaking a little bit so I took her to fashion week you know I've I've taken Tiffany you know play to Abu Dhabi like she's been my plus one um, plenty of times because I because when you around her you want to protect her you want to believe in her and so I you know I'm like okay well let's let me get you into this fashion shit. and so yeah, like that first fashion week she went out, like she, I took her to the shows, like, you know, with me and to parties and introduced her to Michael Kors and Jeremy Scott and all these people. Um, I'm just gonna be real, right? I've I, I ruined a lot of relationships because of Tiffany Haddish because, you know, I, I tried to teach her how people should treat her. You know what I mean? And I tried to give her examples of the way other girls I work with are being treated. Um, and she hired some new people and, and they didn't like they didn't like the way I did business and the way I did things for her. And um, what happens is like these people, basically these white people are always the gatekeepers. Right. And so it's, it comes to, it starts to be in those little things like, oh, he's difficult to work with. Or this person says oh, you don't want to work with him because of that. And and for me, I'm from Chicago, I'm from the hood. It's like if I do something wrong we work that out but we don't let other people come in and 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 you know make this situation bigger and then it's like then it becomes he's not available or he's too expensive and all this shit they do and it got to a situation where she hired somebody and i wasn't getting along with her i didn't think she respected me and um and, and so i walked away and i told tiffany i wish you well and I how does that work together. how we get the gang back together though because i know she loves you mm -hmm. and i know you love her mm -hmm on a deeper level i mean you're yeah. you know you you're you seem to be very close with your clients but i know i've seen you two together and I know. I, I, she was outside of zendaya she was the closest client i ever had like yeah. she would come over to my house and, and lay on the couch and she'll call crying and i'll call when i'm upset and like i don't do that like i don't do that with anybody other than her so i felt like we were more a family and it's like and for me i'm from chicago again it's like if if i said i don't f with them you don't f if you want my friend. So that's the type of mentality in my head. And that's not, that's not what she showed me. But that's fine. Like, if she don't want to run her business that way, then I get it. But again, I ruined relationships for trying to protect and trying to elevate Tiffany. Like how? Just, you know, like, calling her like, listen, you should be getting this. Like, I've done a deal like this before. You should be trying to get this type of money. And she, you know, Tiffany is very much well lost said <laughs> that this, you know, says so she don't know how to filter this. She don't know how to be slick about it. She's going to say what it is. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And so that get, this is a small industry, you know, and that gets back. And a lot of people, I've, again, ruined a lot of relationships from trying to protect her, mm -hmm. you know, or telling people like, no, she's not going to do that because, you know, Tiffany, Tiffany has, Tiffany is Tiffany. She has a certain aesthetic and it's not Hollywood, right? It's not Hollywood. So, and a lot of people don't understand it. And I told them like, these people don't know how to walk into a meeting and pitch you because they don't understand you. Mm -hmm. And they also don't give a about you you know what I mean and so I did a lot of that and and it kind of came back in to bite me in my ass and I'm like I can't do it when anymore. you say when you say they don't get her is because she's from the hood she's yeah. from the streets yeah yeah, yeah. I mean and she is like one of those people she wants everybody to win and sometimes it may be at her loss yeah and and I do think there's like a dogmatic type of energy you have to have in the game yeah and I think she's getting it but I think that's why she has people like me and you around you know so like how how we get the gang back together? I mean, have you guys talked about? No, we haven't. She called me. She called me and left me a voice message when uh, when my nephew died. Uh, but I haven't spoken to her. I haven't spoken to her since. It just it just didn't, you know. And I've seen she's commented on my, you know, posts and stuff like that. But it's just like I was so hurt. Like I was really I was hurt by that because I'm like this this my sister. This my friend. You know. And even if I am doing something, you know that that's not good for you, right? It's like, let's have that conversation. And and we, we had the conversation and, you know, basically I walked away from it. It was like, if you gotta, if she had to make a choice, she was choosing them. So, you know, that just, that didn't sit well with me. 
So did it, have you ever had a situation like this with another client? And if so, did it not hurt you as much because you weren't as close? Yeah, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it happens all the time when, <laughs> again, the gatekeepers, it's like, um, I'm very opinionated, right? And um, I'm also, you can't talk to me any kind of way. You can't treat me any kind of way. You know, you, I'm coming in and I'm, I'm commanding a certain amount of respect. And you, if you, if you're not giving me that, we're gonna have a problem. Like, I, I'm not really afraid of this this industry because I'm black. I'm from the hood. I can always go back. Like, I'll always make money. I'll always get money. I'll always be successful. And if I have to get into a situation where I have to rework who I am and what I'm doing, then I'm not afraid of that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not afraid to st go toe to toe with a publicist or AJ or a manager because I don't feel like I need you because you didn't, you've never done to me anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm self-made. You know what I mean? Like I built my career. You know, I didn't go the conventional routes that everybody go and you know, this person, you owe this person a favor. I owe nobody in this industry. I did it all myself. You know what I mean? Like. Even with my agent, like I went to my agent successful already. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'll walk away from all that because I'm just, I'm a natural born hustler. Like I'm going to figure out how to get to the bag, period. Mm -hmm. You know, so it happens all the time, but it did, it really hurt me because it was her because I felt like we were supposed to protect each other. Was it a conflict with a manager or a publicist or some, mm -hmm. somebody on her team? Mm -hmm. And was it so? How, when you're in that situation, because I know I deal with white privilege every day. Yeah. And I deal with uh, racism in media. Yeah. Racism and raising money, whatever. Yeah. Um, how do you determine when it's privilege that you're dealing with or ego? <laughs> I think that they go hand in hand when you're talking about that group of people, right? Um, it was both. It was both. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was absolutely both. Yeah. So when you were in that situation, do you feel like they weren't respecting you because you were black or because you were maybe closer to her than they wanted you to be? I think it's, I think it's because I was opinionated and it's like the audacity of this black boy to think he knows better or that he can do better and to show them that I can do better and I do know better. Okay, so we gonna get, how we get the squad back? We gotta go to dinner, we gotta do something. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not opposed to that at okay. all. I'm not opposed to that at all. So let's talk about um, your nephew. I mean, that was just, mm -hmm. I, I saw you had posted something on Instagram. I am the worst with dealing with feelings like that. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, mm -hmm. death in general is too much, kids is too much, and then it, you had a lot coming at you because yeah. everybody was talking about it online. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your nephew. He's three years old. Yeah. What, what happened? Um, he fell 17 flights from his, um, his apartment. What, what, how, how, I mean, I wasn't there. How does that yeah. happen? Um, well, we don't really, my, my nephew was very uh, adventurous and like, very much a little boy and, you know, climb on things, jump jump off things and um, had no fear of anything. Um, and we, we still don't understand why he was playing in the window, but what we do understand is that the window was not supposed to open as far as it did. Like he was never supposed to be able to fit. So it's, it's like that window, like your window over there, you open and it opens this way. So he was never supposed to be able to fit in there. Um, even being a, a, a baby at three, and um, and yeah, and I, and he um, he fell, he fell out the window, and um, we shared the same birthday. He was birth born on my birthday, and he's um, the only he was only the only boy. Um, both of my my sister has a daughter, and my other brother has two daughters, and he was the only boy, and um, and really like. The protector of his five-year-old sister and he was just he was you know special and um i went through a lot um i went through a lot of depression and um, grief and i'm slowly i wouldn't say that i'm all the way out of it um but i'm slowly coming back to myself but it, yeah it was it was tough you know i think it's tough it was tougher because it was a baby and so i went through this thing of like I didn't get a chance to love him enough and you know I don't I didn't get a chance to really know him and I'm so busy I didn't spend enough time so and then I went through the stages of who the f 
for you to be grieving when this is your your brother's son. So I just went through all these different stages of of grief and and um, yeah, and still and still are. So um, yeah, that was hard. Grief, but what, but you, what you just said it sounded like there was some guilt too. Guilt, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that's one of the stages of grieving is guilt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was definitely some guilt because because uh, my career has just just been the number one thing in my life and when you you know it's different when it's death is death right but it's when it's a baby it's like you think of all the things that could have been what type of person he could have been what career he could have what his kids would have been like and just you know and I just feel like I didn't I didn't have enough time to just love him mm -hmm. you know so I'm trying to change that with, with my nieces and uh, be more present and more active in their life mm -hmm. um, because I I loved, I, I was crazy about him. I was crazy about that little boy. Um, I think you posted, did you post the casket on your Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, who, what, what design was it? Was that? Um, so he, he loved green. He loved the green Power Ranger. Mm -hmm. That was like his favorite. He thought he was the green Power Ranger. So we had, I didn't know you could do that. Um, so you could wrap caskets like cars. Mm. And so that's what, that's what his mom wanted. So that's what he got. I think seeing a, seeing a baby casket is just hard. Oh. Period. Um, and you did take a lot of time away from social media. Mm -hmm. um, when you were thinking about the death, because I, I think about death a lot and I think mm -hmm. about purpose and, and then legacy and then mm -hmm. time, right? We always are looking at the clock like we got a bunch of it. And then the three year old passes away and yeah. it reminds you that like no day is promised. Yeah. So what are you actively doing to have more of a balance? I, I still don't know if, I've, if I'm ever going to figure that out, you know? Um, Cause there's so many things in my career that I still want to do. And, um, I don't, outside of my nieces now, you know, I talk to them every day, um, every other day for sure. I just try to be more present in their life. Um, and that, that makes me feel really good, but I don't know how to, I don't know balance. Like, I don't understand that. You know, I understand that if you have a family, you have a husband or wife and kids and you have to have balance because you have to, you know, be there for them too. But I don't, I don't get balanced. Like I don't have, I just look at myself like, you know, I work my ass off. I go on vacation in December and I come back to work at jail and I work through the year again. But that's what I'm saying. Like when I know what we're all working for, like yeah. I know what I'm working for, you know what yeah. you're working for. When you start making more money, I know even though when people say, oh, I'm not in for the money, we are in it for the money Absolutely. too. And so, and when the, when you're getting more money, you want to do more. I did find myself self checking today saying, I'm overwhelmed. Like I need to yeah. compartmentalize some things. They bring in some more people to take on certain stuff because it's it's a lot. And then when you when you when when we make all these achievements, we look back and it's, it's just like, what do we have to you know? What do we leave? So I go back to the relationship yeah. thing. Do you think part of why you don't want to be in a relationship is just just time? No, I don't think it's time. It's just um, I just I just really don't care to do it. You kids, know? you want kids? No. No, I don't want kids. Do you have a dog? No. Do you have a fish? No, I have no pets. I have a few Birkins. And <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. I work the way I work because first, I came from nothing, right? And two, it's not about the stuff, but if I, I have the ability to go out and do whatever I want to do. And that's why I work so hard because that, that, that's freedom to me. That's the ultimate freedom to me. I can go and do whatever I want to do when I, when I want to do it. If I want to go and have a thousand dollar meal, I can do it. If I want to, you know, go and spend 30, 40, 50,000 dollars on a bag, I can do it. You know, I haven't, I, I haven't saw a bill in six years. I don't even know. I didn't even know what my mortgage was, to be honest with you. So, you know, that that's freedom to me. Like I literally, I don't, I've never seen a gas bill or a light bill. Well, any, I'm, like I'm laughing at you because I'm not laughing at you. Yeah. I'm laughing because I haven't seen a bill in a while, but I didn't think about it because I just know I want everything on auto pay. So it's just being paid. And as long as the lights turn on when I flip the switch yeah. and I don't get, you know, but just think about that freedom. It like, is a level of freedom. It's, yeah. it's, it's beautiful. Like I have a business manager and literally I didn't know what my, my mortgage was on my house until we were in the pandemic. So then I started to think more about, you know, knowing, knowing my finances and, <laughs> and like my learning my burn rate, you know, like I hadn't, I didn't know what that was, but I was having this conversation. You was just burning it. And he was like, your burn rate is, I'm like, really? So 
it was crazy. And if I thought, if I knew that, I would have probably had anxiety because that's telling you exactly how much money you need to make every month to remain viable. You know what I mean? And it's like, when you hear that, you're like, that's a lot of money. But if you're not paying attention to it and you're just living and working, then six years, I, I, I didn't know. I just didn't know. All right, look, you, so you're styling Spider-Man too? Mm-hmm. So how is it that you, you style Spider-Man and the and the, the the drug user from Euphoria, ain't they they, they dating? Allegedly. Well, I mean, they look cute together. So how do you style? Okay, so hypothetically mm-hmm. speaking, if you were styling a couple, do you mm-hmm. go to her? Would you go to her and say, "What would you like your man to wear?" Or does he have his own experience and she have her own? Well, I've been working with him for three years, and so we've um, we've created his look. Like we've created a style for him. He has a DNA. You know, he has something that's identifyingly him. You know what I mean? And I was able to to collaborate with him and to um, and kind of just build him up, you know, when it far as the fashion, because he's he's a bo- like he's a London boy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like he's a great actor. And but he's like, you know, he like, come, let's go to the pub and have a pint. Like, that's who he is. So mm-hmm. like fashion was never a concern of his. But I show him things. Um, you know, you silhouettes and things. Yeah, yeah, that 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 now that feel that feels good to him, it feels right to him, and it feels like him. So, you know, it's just, again, going back to the architect thing, building a blueprint and, and giving your clients the tools they need to to shine in a way. And so now you're doing the same with Lewis Hamilton. Because mm-hmm. Lewis, I mean, he's a good looking guy, but he wasn't known for fashion. Yeah. But now he's wearing whatever you tell him to wear. Well, he always loved fashion. And I think his relationship in fashion wasn't surface, right? Like he friends with the designers and, you know, and um, people who own the brands, you know what I mean? So his his whole level of access to fashion was different. Um, I think what I was kind of hired to do is um, is just just bring that more outward and let and make it more public facing mm-hmm. that that he was really into it. Mm-hmm. But he, he loves fashion, like loves. OK, back to um, Zendaya, Euphoria, yeah. all the the hate she's been getting, criticism for uh, the drug use on mm-hmm. the show. Everybody loves the show. The mm-hmm. culture loves the show. Mm-hmm. But the Karens is upset. Why are people there? Why are they upset? at it is it because the show's forcing them to see the real world that we live in now or is it because what is it i think it's people get afraid when you really rip the covers off something right it's the same thing with racism right people like this was really happening but yes it's really happening and and people you know even come up to me and like i was ruined when i was in high school and i'm just like you know it's real and it's people are still living that life and um, I think if we if we try to have blinders on certain things, then we can we can't really fix it. You you have to expose it, right? Mm-hmm. You have to expose the scar, you know, to to heal it. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's how I feel about it. So because you're so close to these people, do you become a counselor to them too? Like when they're going through. Um. Shit? Or do you just keep it strictly? I try to keep it strictly business because I don't want to get my heart broke like what happened, you know, with Tiffany. So. Uh, me as a dad don't have any other choice because we 10 years in this together, mm-hmm. you know, and from the very beginning of her career to the very beginning of my career. So our relationship is a bit different, you know. Um, she, you know, you know this this industry, like people are like, oh, I love you. But when she tells me she loves me, like I know she really loves me, you know, and she's proven that to me time and time again. And when I tell her I love her, it's, it's not fake Hollywood, I love you. It's I love you. You're my sister. Like, I love you. So that's different, right? So I try to I try to care about my clients on a human level and, and, and really care about what's happening with and to them. But I try to also not be a thousand percent in my feelings because you you don't know what's gonna happen. Clients come and go. Mm-hmm. You know, they they can wake up tomorrow like, oh, he's not, he's not giving me what I need anymore. So I'm going to go here. And if you, if you personally attached to that, then it's going to be devastating to you. Now it's like, you know, it's, it's just part of the business for me. So with all the rooms that you're in, do you ever experience racism? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, have I ever experienced blatant? <laughs> no, I haven't. Right. But I have experienced subtle things, right? I've experienced um, walking walking into a room and 
um, being the only black person there and people automatically assuming that my white assistant is me, like walk to her to greet her as me, you know, and being shocked that she's not the person in power or, you know, people, you know, going at me, um, going at me and, and they want to, you know, um, go against what I'm saying. And it's like, but I'm right and everybody else knows I'm right. So you're just doing it. So it's almost like the audacity of you to become this person, the audacity of you to, you know, become this successful or, or this powerful or this thing that a lot of them. And it's to me, for what I've noticed is it's mainly white women that has this thing like because I because my job has always been done by white women. You know what I mean? And well, I, I think I, that's why I asked the question, because I when I see you on covers with your clients, like you have the biggest, power, most powerful people in their lane mm -hmm. and being on those covers, which are white covers. Mm -hmm. um, and those are white people reading it and looking at it. I always wonder what people I, you ever for had me. Experience? And this is nothing that it's, it's it always just like I feel them thinking it like the audacity of him to to be better than than the people that look like them. And I feel like that's what I wake up with every day. So I wake up and you, I don't know if you feel like this, but I wake up and feel like I can never f up. Like I can never do No, I wake wrong. up every day and f up. <laughs> but I do it, but see like you, you yeah. we own ourselves though, right? Yeah. So, but you, it's like you have to, I think because you are connected to so many people, what you do and say also reflects Celine yeah. Dion, yeah. Zendaya. Yeah, Zendaya, cause that's what the headline is gonna be. You know what I mean? If I do something, if I do something f up, it's gonna be like Zendaya stylist did something f up. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. And it's like also, you know, I've opened the doors for a lot of other black stylists to do things that we weren't doing before. And that, that weighs on me too. I'm like, I, I always want to be there. I always want to leave the door open and, and my legacy be that I've helped other people get to, to a, a higher level, help them make more money. And, you know, um, so yeah, I, I have this, this pressure and this anxiety sometimes like I have to, I have to be the best, you know, I, I have to do it. I can't f up. It has to be perfect. Legendary just blew up out of nowhere. Yes. Is that yours? Did you create that show? No. no, no, you, no. You, you're one of the hosts on there, though. I am one of the judges on there. Yeah. yeah. And so how did that show come about? Because it's taken off in a way that I don't think we've ever seen that mm -hmm. on TV, right? It's doing really well. It's a, it's, um, it's just about an underserved community, you know, that, that really never had a big light um, shined on them before. And, and so what we try to do it's people who are not in the scene, like I'm not in the ballroom scene. I'm very familiar with it, have done winter balls and know people in ballroom and all that, but not technically in the scene. But it's like the people that's not in the scene, it's like what, like Meg was on it last, um, the last two seasons. And it's like, we just use our platform to like make it, make people who follow us understand it and wanna be able, wanna know what it is and watch the show. and high end book those people. You know, for me, I have to do any, I do anything that I think is going to elevate other black people. And I think that's what the show has been able to do mm -hmm. for the ballroom um, scene. I used to be a fan of Laomi's, not really as much anymore because she kind of attacked me online or whatever. I said something on a live stream one day. Again, I don't know the ballroom scene. I yeah. think everybody thinks because you're gay, gay that you, you're supposed yeah. to know the yeah. ballroom scene. Or if you're a gay man, you're supposed to know the trans movement. Yeah. We all got our own sh and, you know, we all come from different places, but I said something online, like, um, I was into it with somebody from a house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, you know, you should aspire to do more than the ballroom. They lit my ass up. Mm -hmm. That was a comment of pure ignorance because I had not really understood the movement. And yeah. then as I started, because when I started all the attention, I said, you know, let me go do some research because Leomi, of course, she posted right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was a fan of Leomi. Yeah. Uh, you should have her on, yeah. Yeah, Leomi, bring your ass, come on. I saw okay. her out recently at the yeah. club. I was going to speak to her, but I had been sitting, yeah. so. She'll love that. But no, I mean, I, I it made me go back and look into it. And the, well, for the for folks who don't know, I mean, the barroom scene is, and the houses is, it's, you know, a lot of people that didn't have homes. Mm -hmm. didn't have people mm -hmm. that cared about them. So uh, I saw the show and what was your reaction to the audience's reaction to it? Um, I love it, but I'm the villain of the show. <laughs> You're you. <laughs> <laughs> True. I'm the Simon Cowell of the show. So, so my, for me, it's mixed, re it's, it's always mixed reviews, you know, but um, I am who I am and, you know, and I'm not going to let anybody change me or bully me to be anything I am. I say what the f I want to say and, you know, you accept it or reject it. 
I don't care. But that world is so, like, they take that shit really seriously. Very serious. seriously, yeah. And so when you're... But, but they should, though, because a lot of people don't understand ballroom has been around for 60 years, and it's documented, and they know who their pioneers are. They know the people who, who started it. They know the stories. They celebrate each other. You know what I mean? So they should take it that seriously because it's 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 really a part of black history, mm -hmm. you know, that that the rest of the world don't know. But you meet somebody that's really in ballroom, they'll tell you about how the ball started, where they started, the first people that walked. It's a documented history. And that's why I love it so much, because I, I look at myself as kind of like a, a black historian and and a, a storyteller of black stories. And it's it's so beautiful that they can tell you like um, you know, Crystal LaBeja started the House of LaBeja in 1960s because she wasn't able to do this. It's, it's actually really interesting and beautiful. And it's books and it's pictures and, you know, it's people that's been in the ballroom scene all these years who can tell you the stories about these icons and, you know, trans women who were doing things and modeling and all this stuff. It's, it's a rich, rich history. So, and you look at it that's in that way, they should take it that seriously. Do they, they all take it that seriously? I think the people who are really, really in it and and doing it for the right reasons because of family and, and, and the camaraderie around it, yes, yes, they do take it that seriously. Mm -hmm. And they will fight you no, about for their culture. Yeah. yeah, no, so, so, I mean, I've gone back, I've seen Paris is Burning, I've mm -hmm. done, you know, some research, but when I look at, um, like, when Tiffany was a guest host on there mm -hmm. and she got a lot of heat for chopping somebody or whatever she said, but, but I got what she was saying what she was talking about the history of yeah. it, right? Yeah, I mean, she was there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people didn't know that Tiffany used to go to a lot of balls, and and she understands the culture. And you know, the, you know, our the interaction we had. And um, her and Meg too. Your is special, spicy. Yeah, yeah, it is. But yeah, it's, you know, she did get. But everybody who goes on there, you know, it's like everything else on social media. Like some people gonna love you, some people gonna hate you. They gonna talk, they gonna start groups and all that. But it's you know, you just keep. Keep your head up, keep walking. So when do you guys start filming that again? We're filming now. Mm. Is Meg back? Um, <laughs> I love Meg. All right, so what's next? Like coffee table book, furniture, Um, home I am talking about a book, a book deal. Um, again, I am really trying to transition my career into other things. Like you know, what? Designing and being the creative director of a house interiors big collaborations with big box brands trying to do all that you know i'm trying to really take what i built and 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 monetize it and capitalize on it as much as possible mm -hmm. and and spend less time traveling with people <laughs> i mean because it's a lot it's taxing you know yeah. maybe pull up fashion weeks be it around those moments yeah. but like the hustle and bustle you know it's like when i'm really when i'm really working like pre even i i went back to work in the pandemic and april so it was like february march at the end of april i went back to work i was on planes when people when it was like two people were had like i never stopped working yeah. i never stopped working and so that's just become my lifestyle so it's what i'm used to like i'll i'll fly to new york i'll take a red eye to new york tonight work get back on the flight come back work and then go back you know what i mean like i i'm a, i'm just built for that like mm -hmm. i'll you know just I like it. I like to work. I like. I mean, to. it doesn't feel like work because it's it's like it's your thing. Yeah, it's, and it's it's you know, it's it's all I know how to do. I don't I don't have any other time. <laughs> okay, but then okay, I, I'm gonna end with this because mm -hmm. I'm committed now to seeing you get married. Because here's the deal: like once we get all this money, we want to don't we want to share it with somebody or no? No, don't you want to find somebody else with a lot of money to share that money with you? Uh, you know, somebody else asked me about that. I don't know. I like somebody who has a lot of availability. Okay. That's fine too. Like, let me tell you something. How, my views on love is like, however you find love and whatever love means to you and whatever type of love you want, that's what you should have. Yeah. You know, period. Like, it's not for anybody else to judge. You know, I might go to Africa and meet somebody who don't have it and, and bring them back and, you know, who knows? It happened to me in Colombia. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. All right, well, listen, um, I'm I'm just happy to see everything happening in your life. And you. I love seeing good people win. Like, we've, you know, we both come in the industry. We've seen a lot of people who, yeah. I'll say it, don't deserve to win, win. Yeah. 
Um, but now they're the $75 girls, so it don't matter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy for you, too. I'm, I'm proud you. of you. I'm, this is amazing. Like, I'm really, really happy for you. Thank you. Um, and I always, you know, I always, before you became the Jason Lee you are now, I always liked you and appreciated you. And, and we ain't never yeah. had no problem. Never. See, I kind of feel like when you're an honest person and you just, your intentions are clear, you mm -hmm. real, it is what the f*** it is. You got to respect that no matter what it is. Yeah. I feel like in this city, people don't give you that. See, that's why I go out. Yeah. I just, but we got to go out. I don't we, want the energy around me. Yeah. I really believe, last thing I'm going to say is I really believe energy is. Like contagious? Yes. Yes. I, I, and I just don't, I don't want it. You know what I mean? Like, I, and I'm also a, 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 a empath, like, <laughs> and I can feel it. I know when you don't have the best, the best interest. I can just feel it and I don't want it because it, it can destroy you. It's, it's a virus. Like it'll seep into you and, and it'll, it'll destroy you. And I just, I just want to, if, if, if I wake up every day and I wake up happy and I'm not worried about it, everything that I manifest and ask the universe, I get. But anytime that's interfered with, it's not the same vibration. And I'm not going to let somebody else what I got going on. And I don't care who that is. <laughs> so Chicago. <laughs> Long Roach. Thank you. <laughs>